وعلیہم السلام اوسیکم عباد اللہ اتقو اللہ و اخوفکم من عقابه فإن اللہ ینجی من اتقاہو بمفازتہم لا یمسہم سو ولا ہم یزنون و یکرم من خافہو یقیہم شر ما خافو و یلقیہم نظرتا و سرورا و ارغبکم فی کرامت اللہ الدائمہ و اخوفکم اقابہ اللذی لا انقطاع لہو و لا نجات لمن استوجبہو فلا تغرنکم الدنیا و لا ترکنو الیہا فإنها دار غرور كتب الله عليها وعلى أهلها الفناء فتزودوا منها الذي يكرمكم الله به من التقوى والعمل الصالح فإنه لا يصل إلى الله من أعمال العباد إلا ما خلص منها ولا يتقبل الله إلا من المتقين After all due praise to Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our nourisher, our provider, our sustainer, our Lord. We seek best of his blessings and favors for his most beloved servant, for his most beloved creation and best of his abad, our Nabi and our Rasul, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and his purified household أهل البيت عليهم الصلاة والسلام Once again in this sacred hour of Jum'ah I would like to remind myself and all of you who are present here for taqwa of Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected brothers and sisters, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Mubarakah Ghafir, verse number 28 speaks about history of Nabi Musa وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَونَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ أَتَخْتَلُونَ الرَّجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ بَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيَّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَإِنْ يَكُوْ كَاذِبًا فَعَلَيْهِ كِذْبُهُ وَإِنْ يَكُوْ صَادِقًا يُسِبْكُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي يَعِدْكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي مَنْ هُوَ مُسْرِفٌ كَذَّابٌ صدق الله العلي العظيم Almighty سبحانه وتعالى in this verse says that after, of course, time does not allow me to give the whole background, but after Pharaoh decided to kill Musa and wipe him out completely, it is at that point someone, Quran does not mention the name, but Quran says, Rajulun Mu'min Min Ali Fir'aun a believer man from the family or the tribe or the clan of Pharaoh himself said, Yaktumu imana. Someone who was concealing, hiding his faith. Do you kill a person simply because he says, My Lord is Allah? Even though he brought, even though he brought to you clear signs from your Lord. And if he is a liar, his lying will recoil him. 
But what about if he is truthful? You will be facing with some of the awesome consequences of which he warns you. And Allah does not guide the right way. One who goes over the board, who exceeds the limits, musrifun. Kazab and utter liar. Of course, the statement of this Rajulun Mu'minun Min Ali Firaun continues. I'm not saying he stopped at that point, but just would like to reflect today on this particular verse. In the situation where Musa is alone and hardly anybody supports Musa, especially from the people of Pharaoh, and they are determined to kill him, a man out of the same clan, folk, whatever you want to call it, comes and says and challenges that why want why you do you want to kill this man? What is his crime? He only called you to his Lord. Now this is a phenomena which Quran explains. But I would like to take you one step behind or beyond that always in the history of Ambiya there were people who were not openly or publicly pronouncing their commitment or allegiance or faith in the Prophet. But behind the scenes they were great supporters. This is one of the sunan, one of the divine traditions in the history of Ambiya and prophets. That sometimes Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports his messengers and his apostles and his rasul from people who are without any doubt mu'min, rajulun mu'min. They are mu'min. Yaktumu imana, but they are not publicly pronouncing it, making it public that they are mu'min, but they are the one who support, they are the one who resist, they are the one who protect Allah's messengers. Another example is, of course, Ashab of Kahf, people of Cave and so on. Beautiful is this really ayat of Quran. Rajulun mu'minun. And look at his logic. How he defends. How he defends. He says that I am from you. I am not his believer. I am not his follower. But listen. What he is talking, it makes sense. His crime is that he is only calling toward God, the creator. Now, another very important point here or a side issue. We understand from this Quranic narrative that pharaohs and the time of pharaohs, they did believe in some sort of a God, some sort of a deity or, you know, existence of a God above their own. So he said that, look, you want to kill somebody who is calling that Allah is my Lord. And look at his arguments. His arguments are concrete. And then he brings that very, very rational and, you know, what we call it, dalil of probability and, you know, proof of probability. That, listen, there are only two possibilities. He is liar or he is truthful, right? So if he was liar and we listened to him or did not kill him or let him carry on what he was doing, 
we will not lose anything in the next verse in fact this man says and you have a control over everything you are an empire you pharaoh you control you're not going to lose from this man if he's a liar his lie will come back to himself right but what about if he was truthful oh my god then you will lose then you will face the consequences of denying him and rejecting him in this world and hereafter and then he uses some bad why because at least if you don't believe in the world hereafter after death even in this world you will face very severe consequences so what rationality says don't kill him listen to him test him and then he concludes by making a statement very beautifully he says that if he's a liar and he's exploiting the situation musrifun allah does not leave people who are exaggerating exploiting and lying utter liars kazab allah will take care of him why you want to kill allahu akbar in this most rational and reasonable manner rajulun mu'minun min ali fir'aun yaktumu imana defends nabi musa a believer while he is hiding his faith brothers and sisters this is a strategy this is a strategy which quran teaches us that sometimes we are not in a position to reveal not in a condition the conditions are not conducive that we can reveal our full identity our full faith and belief but our purpose is there and we use a tactical approach we use a strategy to push our purpose to push our aim to go ahead and that's what quran says wa qala rajulun min ali fir'aun mu'minun min ali fir'aun yaktumu imana this is history of nabi musa and it happened in case of other anbiya and prophets alayhi wassalatu wassalam and of course and indeed now i would like to take you in this last juma'a of rabiul awwal and series of our discussion about our nabi and our rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam who has most terrible enemies and opponents without any doubt who were thirsty of his blood who were ready to kill him before he reaches to any success or achieve anything regarding his dawa regarding his mission of promotion of islam and there again we see that almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based upon this sunan ilahiya in this divine tradition which was there in case of other previous anbiya protected and supported our nabi and our rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam with rajulun mu'minun yaktumu imana a mu'min but he was not revealing exposing his iman and who was that someone who stood like a steel shield and concrete wall in front of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam when it came to assaults attacks threats dangers toward our nabi and rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam who was that person who was that personality when there was no one to protect nabi someone with this commitment came in front and challenged quraish and enemies of nabi and did not allow them to harm 
Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Another beautiful chapter of the Sirah of our Nabi and Rabbi Rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. It has so many angles. Time does not allow me to go. Who was that person? That person was none but his uncle, his guardian, his supporter, his protector, Abu Talib. Abu Talib, Abu Talib, whose real name was Abd Manaf. Abu Talib. And this relationship between Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Talib is very, very lengthy and long relationship. I don't think anybody was so much in contact with the Prophet in early years of Islam than this personality. Prophet was seven or eight years old. As you know, Prophet's father passed away before his birth. Nobody to take care of Prophet. Who took care of Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His grandfather. And when he was seven or eight years ago, a year old, his grandfather also passed away. And when grandfather was leaving this world and departing this world, what he said? He said they are to his son Abu Talib that Abu Talib I am leaving this special child of mine grandson of mine in your custody and care take care of him because I know nobody can take care of you better than nobody can take care of him better than you there's a poetry, in fact, and I don't have time to go in those details, but really beautiful parts of the history of Islam. Grandfather Abdul Muttalib, in form of a poetry, said to Abu Talib, Abu Talib, this one, you know, it's amazing. These poetries are amazing. These, these people, Arabs, Quraysh, Bani Hashim, they used to express their opinions, their views in form of poetry. If you want to understand the personality of these great, great leaders, influential personalities of Arab society, pre-Islamic and even post-Islamic, one of the best ways is to do it through their poetry. Amazing is this grandfather of Rasulullah's sentence. He says that he is unique. Huh? No one can be, you cannot replace him. Allahu Akbar. When he's advising Abu Talib, you must take care of Muhammad, he's saying, listen, he is one in the world. There's no second to him. Take care of him. And what Abu Talib said, Allahu Akbar. Again in poetry he said, O oh father, you don't need to make wasiyah and will. He is apple of my eye, soul of my body. He is my son. And Son of my brother, Allahu Akbar. You know that Abdullah and Abu Talib, father of the Prophet and Abu Talib, were from one mother, not from two different mothers. One father, one mother. Allahu Akbar. And then, from this time, eight years, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was under the custody of this great man, Abu Talib, Allahu Akbar. Now, Abu Talib is also somebody from another angle. He's not only guardian of the Prophet. He is a father of Ali ibn Abi Talib also. And there becomes issue political. <laughs> Therefore, now when we talk about Abu Talib, people don't look at it as guardian and uncle of the Prophet, as caretaker of the Prophet, they only look at him as father of Ali ibn Abi Talib. But it's not me, my brothers, it's not Shia, it is not followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib who have recorded. 
इट इज द सेम पीपल हु बिलीव दैट अस्तरुल्लाह वन आउजबिल्लाह मिन जालिक अबू तालिब नेवर हैड ईमान दे आल्सो हैव रिकॉर्डेड दैट इन टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द प्रॉफिट अबू तालिब वेंट ओवर द बोट Abu Talib himself has sons and children. Aqil, Talib, Jafar, Umm Hani, and others. Five, six children he had, and he was very poor also. Didn't have any money resources. But this is, as I mentioned, the same books. They narrate that Abu Talib. never ever preferred his own sons over muhammad and in fact preferred muhammad over his sons not only that he never allowed muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be separate from him even for a day even when abu talib traveled he took him with him and when he slept in the night he made sure that he must sleep in the same room where abu talib sleeps allahu akbar allahu akbar who is this who is this man ha huh? whose wife is fatima bint asad allahu akbar mother of ali ibn abi talib again ha huh? that when Allahu Akbar when she was with prophet all the time until she migrated with prophet to Medina and when in the fourth hijra she passed away prophet came and she was almost near to her death she said rahimakallahu ya ummi you know this shows i'm quoting this wording of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as recorded by books of sira of our sunni brothers you know what he said rahimakallahu ya ummi allah's mercy be upon you oh my mother allah akbar kunti ummi ba'd ummi oh fatima you were mother after my mother you were my mother after my mother taju'ini wa tashbani oh mother i know that you kept hungry you did not have enough food but you fed me wa ta'rini wa taksimi allahu akbar and oh mother i know that you did not have enough material to cover yourself and your children so you stayed naked but you covered me wa tamna'ini nafsak tayban wa tut'imini and if by chance there was a good food available one of the days in our life in those days Oh mother I remember by God prophet is swearing and saying wallah I remember my mother if there was a by chance a good food tayyiban tayyiban you didn't allow your children to eat that food and you gave me that food <laughs> Allahu akbar turidina bi zalika wajh Allah wa ad-dar al-akhira you wanted by doing this great sacrifice pleasure of allah and hereafter so i'm not talking about fatima bin tasad which is again another very important topic and amazing personality is this lady fatima allahu akbar but just trying to tell you that's how prophet explains house of abu talib for himself abu talib kept his children hungry but fed prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam allahu akbar. Allahu Akbar. When Fatima bint Asad passed away, this is exactly the sentences. Allahu Akbar. Kafana ha Rasulullah fi qamise. Prophet gave her kafan in her in in his own shirt. You know why? Because one day Fatima bint Asad heard from the Prophet that in the day of Qiyamah everybody will be naked. Allahu Akbar Fatima bint Asad this lady of chastity said ya Rasulullah is any way i can be covered on the day of qiyamah prophet promised her yes 
you will be covered. He said, how? He said, I will give my shirt to you. Nobody will be able to remove that shirt from you. This is for the moment. This is exactly the sentences. Kaffanaha Rasulullah fi kameese wa salla alayha and he made janaza on her. Wa kabbara alayha sab'eena takbeer. Allahu Akbar. All of you have participated in janaza. How many takbeers you read? Four. Or our Shia fiqh says five. This is the books of Sira saying on janaza of Fatima bint Asad prophet recited 70 takbirs not 4 or 5 70 takbirs when nazala fi qabrha he himself came inside her qabr oh and he himself cleaned the qabr yusawi made it right made it clean nice wa kharaja min qabr bistaja even hadith says that he slept in the qabr before placing fatima in the qabr wa kharaja min qabrha and he came out of the qabr wa aynahu tazrafa allah akbar while both of his eyes were shedding tears like pouring rain allah akbar allah akbar umar ibn khattab came close to the prophet ya rasulullah o prophet of allah i never seen you doing to anybody what you did to this woman allahu akbar faqala sallallahu alayhi wa alihi ya umar o oh umar this woman was to me like my mother who gave me birth inna aba talib kana yasna'u as-sani wa takunu lahu al-ma'adiba wa kana yajma'una ala ta'ami allahu akbar prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that Abu Talib used to earn something, used to bring some food in our house. Allahu Akbar, but this woman and this husband, this Abu Talib, they used to give me first food and whatever was left over, they used to give to their children. Do you know who is Fatima bint Asad and who is Abu Talib? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This shows love of Abu Talib and care of Abu Talib regarding Nabi and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Yes, he did not explicitly announce that he is mu'min and believer exactly like Rajulun min ali fir'aun. Rajulun mu'minun min ali fir'aun yaktumu imana. But he defended like Rajulun mu'minun min ali fir'aun. Exactly in the same manner. Allahu Akbar. When they came to attack and kill Prophet, what he says? Yabna akhi is hab. Oh, son of my brother, go. Don't worry. Carry on with your mission. Wallahi la usallimuka abada. I swear by God, I will never ever hand over you to them. Never. Allahu Akbar. This is Abu Talib who stood so firmly in defense and protection of our Nabi. What is the role of this man in protection of Nabi? Life of our Nabi and Rasul, sallallahu How many assassination plans and killing conspiracies and Abu Talib stood? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You know, this sentence, I would like not go in, you know, great details but this sentence of the prophet says a lot he says until abu talib was alive until abu talib was alive quraish could not could not harm me could not do anything which was makru for me which was disliked for me this is abu Allahu Akbar. And when news of death of Abu Talib came, how Prophet cried. You know, Allahu Akbar. So many ahadiths. Abu Talib has, let me tell you, very interesting. Huh? Abu Talib has 3,000 poetry, 3,000 ashar, 3,000 bait, you know, the couplets of poetry. 
if you look at these 3,000 poetry recorded by Abu Talib from Abu Talib, Ibn Abil Hadi, the Mu'tazali, Shafi'i, this Shafi'i scholar says, 90% of this poetry is in praise of Muhammad, regarding beauty of Muhammad, akhlaq of Muhammad, character of Muhammad, mission of Muhammad. And you call him kafir, Allahu Akbar. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Well, Prophet will cry like that for his kafir uncle. Based upon what? Based upon one week hadith recorded by, reported by Mughayrat ibn Shabah, a hardcore enemy of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amazing. Abu Sufyan is Muslim and Abu Talib is kafir. Allahu Akbar. Ah. That Slave of Hinda who chewed the liver of Hamza Sayyidu Shuhada is Muslim and Sahabi and Abu Talib is Kafir. Allahu Akbar. You know, there are so much to say. Who made it possible for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to get married to Khatija? No one but Abu Talib. When Abu Talib took him for that journey and they met Allahu Akbar, some Christian priest there and he predicted. Abu Talib testified. Abu Talib was well aware of who was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. I can carry on brothers and sisters talking about this great man and his role. Important lesson for us is that we should look at this great personality of Abu Talib and his role and how he uses this strategy of not revealing his full faith and iman in front of the public, but doing the most crucial and important job of protecting and protection of our Nabi and our Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Last but not least, uh, let me say to you. As when Abu, Abu Talib died, that year, Prophet named that year, Amul Hosn, year of mourning, year of grief. Do you announce that on dying of a kafir? Allahu Akbar. Anyway, how seek him, Ibad Allah, and of Sri Betakwa Allah. Was someone Allah, where Yakum Betakwa, Wajal Allah, her at the Hair and Lana, Walakum, find the Hair al Hadis, Wabla Romo is at the Mutakin, Kitabullah Hill, Aziz al Hakim, Smilah Rahman Rahim, while I answer in the insana, Lafi Hosr, Illa Lazina Aman, who am in a swally heart, what a was so will Haki, what a was so with Shabbat. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات آمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وجعله رحمة للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا لله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا من يطيع الله ورسوله فقد رشاد ومن يعصهما فقد غوى أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله الذي ينفع بتاعته من أتاه والذي يضر بماسيته من أساه الذي إليه معادكم وعليه حسابكم فإن التقوى وصية الله فيكم وفي الذين من قبلكم 
قال الله عز وجل ولقد وسينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان اتقوا الله وان تكفروا فان لله ما في السماوات وما في الارض وكان الله غنيا حميدا ان تفعوا بموعظه الله والزموا كتابه فانه ابلغ الموعظه وخير الامور في المعاد عاقبه ولقد اتخذ الله الهجه فلا يهلك من هلك الا ان بينت ولا يحيى من حيا الا ان بينت وقد بلغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله الذي ارسل به فالزموا وصيته وما ترك فيكم من بعده من الثقلين كتاب الله واهل بيته الذين لا يدل من تمسك بهما ولا يهتدي من تركهما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد عبدك ورسولك سيد المرسلين وامام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين اللهم صل على علي امير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وحجتك على خلقك وايتك الكبرى والنبع العظيم وصل على الصديقه الطاهره فاطمه الزهراء سيده النساء العالمين وصل على سبطه الرحمه وامام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد الشباب اهل الجنه وصل على ائمه المسلمين وحداه المؤمنين وحماه المستضعفين علي بن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد بن علي باقر العلوم وجعفر بن محمد الصادق وموسى بن جعفر الكاظم وعلي بن موسى الرضا ومحمد بن علي الجواد وعلي بن محمد الهادي والحسن بن علي العسكري والخلف الحادي المهدي حججك حججك على عبادك وامناك في بلادك صلاه كثيره دائمه اللهم افتح له فتحا يسيرا وانصره نصرا عزيزا اللهم اظهر به دينك وسنه نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافه اهد من الخلق اللهم انا نرغب اليك في دوله كريمه تعز بها الاسلام واهلا وتذل بها النفاق واهلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة الى طاعتك والقادة في سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والاخره اللهم ما حملتنا من الحق فعرفنا وما قصرنا عنه فعلمنا اوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله وانسجن اي ريمايند ماي سيلف ان اول اوف يو هو ار بريزنت هير فور تقوى اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى موست اوف ماي تايم از اولريدي taken by the first khutba but anyway quickly just mention as headlines of some issues i would like to draw attention number one of course some developments on the front of fight against corruption in our country and that is encouraging alhamdulillah and we hope that justice is prevailed above parties above political affiliations and alliances number 2 of course very very i also wanted to speak last night we could not speak and again today unfortunately don't have time this rise of ugly you know disease of racism in our society and in our own city you know in schools in different venues of our society very serious it is we need to really speak and address this challenge and this challenge is not confined to one particular community or class of a society it's a wide spread problem also beside racism is a reactionary populist politics of exploitation you know that is another you know something politicians are always there to exploit any situation for their own agendas and for their own interest the third point quickly is very serious concern of that once again we are witnessing rise of Uh, infection rate in corona covid 19 and once again it is very important to remind and you know be careful ourselves and each other 
when it comes to this very, very serious challenging facing the whole world, of course, including our own country and society. أَرْشِيكُمْ عَبَادَ اللَّهُ وَنَفْسِي بِتَقْوَى اللَّهُ وَأَسْمَنَ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِالتَّقْوَى وَجَالَ الْآخِرَةَ خَيْرٍ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ فَإِنَّ خَيْرِ الْحَدِيثِ وَأَبْلَغُ مُعِزَةِ الْمُتَّقِينَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ حَدَّ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدَ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلَّهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ